turning on your lights, catching up with friends, home deliveries, receiving healthcare. Some of your most important moments in life, big and small, are made possible through Oracle technology. If you join us, you'll be part of an elite team who help the world's most recognizable brands do what they do best. More than 400,000 businesses around the world trust Oracle to run their mission critical operations. Like the world's largest bakery, in a single day, Grupo Bimbo uses Oracle Cloud to produce and transport 13,000 types of products via some 53,000 routes. Industry disruptors like Zoom rely on Oracle to innovate in the face of change. When it had to quickly scale in early 2020, Oracle Cloud infrastructure was able to get them where they needed to be. With the industry's broadest suite of cloud applications, our customers can use emerging technologies to act on real-time insights. That's why when the Premier League wanted to get fans closer to the action, it chose Oracle Cloud. Now you can see inside the beautiful game like never before. Meanwhile, Oracle technology is helping African nations like Ghana save lives with a cloud-based vaccination system. Here, your work will do more than transform the world of business. It will power nonprofits and give billions of people the tools to outpace change. Go beyond what's been done before in your career. Create the future with us. Binondo, 1920. Here, 100 years ago, men of courage and vision founded China Bank to help a community of struggling but worthy merchants and traders achieve their dreams. They were driven by an impeccable code of trust and respect through the hard times and the good times. That's how China Bank successfully partnered with four, five generations of loyal clients. Today, China Bank keeps pace with evolving technology while remaining grounded on integrity and prudence. China Bank, celebrating the past, embracing the future. Times change, but values remain. Offices are empty. Shaking hands are no longer firm. People have lost their jobs and 4 million Filipinos are unemployed. But with businesses bouncing back, Nesda commits to help the country overcome the challenges brought about by the COVID-19 crisis. With job opportunities open for everyone, easy application processes, and some temporary work from home positions. Not even a pandemic can stop what we do best, and that is to provide you with jobs that will help you get through these trying times. We will create a better world, one job seeker at a time. We are Nesda. Good day and welcome back, schoolmates! Muling nagbabalik ang inyong paborito online tambayan dito sa ating pamantasan. Nagkahatid siya naman ng everything you have to know, ako si El. Tampok ang mga nakaka-proud at uwa ng PUPians. Ako naman si Sir Dennis. At muli niyo kami makakasama dito sa... Pinakausap-asapan sa pamantasan! Yes. 
Actually, hobby ko yung pagbabasa eh. Kung wala ka ako ngayon, yung celebrity ako. Ah, talaga lang. Alam mo ba ako kasi ng celebrity? It's wrong in there. Siyempre sa NALRs. Oh, okay. Sa mga pinang freshie ka ng mga. Oo, oo. At anong ba yung bilang library ang meron sa NALRs? Tumpa! Ganun. Correct. Ay, be? Gusto ko yan, ma'am? Oo. At para malaman mo kung ano-ano nga ba ang opisina at colleges na dito, panoorin natin. Schoolmates, nandito ako ngayon sa Nini Aquino Library and Learning Resources Center kung saan madalas tumamay ang mga PUP upang mag-research, magbasa at gumawa ng assignment. Pero bukod dito, alam niyo ba ang kwento sa makasaysayang NALLRC building na ito? Everything you have to know, dito sa Nayong Noon. Research mo? Research. Ah, thesis. Sa books. Pag nag-search ng assignment. Ah, hindi Bulwagan, maligtas para sa marketing. <laughs> Taong 1988, nasimulang itayo ang dalawang palapag na gusali sa ilalim noon ng pamumuno ni dating PUP President Nemesio E. Prudente. At sa taong 1990 naman, nang maisakato para ng pagtatayo ng gusali at tinawag tong PUP University Library. Hindi rin nagtagal, taong 2001 ang palitan muli ang pangalan nito ng Ninoy Aquino Learning Resources Center. Makalipas din ang dalawang taon, ito ay apisyal na tinawag ng Nino Aquino Library and Learning Resource Center. Before, yung ating library ay small library na two-story building at the back of the chapel na ngayon ay ginagamit ng nutrition. It was conceptualized by Dr. Prudente himself. Over one year and several months, natapos yan. It is not a, just a library but it is a uh, library complex. Meaning, maglalagay dyan isang maliit na museum at merong theater nga. At yun nga ang ginawang balagtas. Pero alam niyo ba na bukod sa library, ay dito rin matatagpuan ng ilang mahalagang opisina ng sintang paaralan. Sa first floor, matatagpuan ang isa sa kilalang kolehiyo sa universidad. Ito ay ang College of Law. Ang main entrance ng gusali at mga opisina gaya ng ICTO, Quality Assurance Center, at Open University Management System naman ang bubungan sa second floor. Sa third floor naman, makikita ang pinaka-importanteng bahagi ng gusali, ang main library na nahati sa iba't ibang pasilidad. Open University System, Multimedia Center, Film Viewing Room, Bulwagang Bonifacio at Bulwagang Balagtas naman ang bumubuo sa ikaapat na palapag. Now you'll know, patunay ng Ninoy Aquino Library and Learning Resources Center serves as PUP's gateway to Global Information Society. Kaya naman, isa ito sa mga pundasyon at pasilidad na dapat dating pangalaga ang mga PUP yan para sa sintang paaralan. Ngayon naman pala ang kwento sa likod ng NLR. Yes, so next episode naman sa kwento ng sa harap. Pero hindi sure may ba tayo. Ngayon alam ko na talaga na may mga offices pa Sasagot sa inyong frequently asked questions only here at PUP Fox. Hi schoolmates! Sa dami-dami ng mga pagkain dito sa ating tintang paralan, sigurado ako na medyo ang hirap pumili. Pero pasok na pasok ang burgers dahil suwak sa budget, patok sa PUP yan, at suwak sa panlasa ng ating mga schoolmates. Kaya kung usaping burger lang naman, ako ang bahala para sagutin ang frequently asked question number one. Saan nga ba merong best burgers na patok sa ating mga PUP yan? Itong first burger natin ay mapapapaypay kasi naglalagablab nilang burgers. Introducing Varda. 
ang burger joint na meron 26 branches at isa sa mga yun ay nandito sa ating sintang paralan. Dito patok ang mga school-inspired menu na fit na fit para sa ating mga schoolmates. Para naman sa mga basketball fans, time out muna tayo and let's visit this burger court. Grilla Burgers located at GR Neta Street, Corner Aureliano. Kilala sila sa pagkakaroon ng mga basketball inspired na menu at malas dunk na flavors. Authentic burgers at fresh grilled burger na sulit sa budget. Ang susunod namang burger bistro sa ating list ay para sa mga schoolmates natin sa COC, SEA at ITEC, ang G-Spot. So mga schoolmates, bisitahin ang kanilang cozy bistro at tikman ang kanilang Instagram worthy quirky burgers and side dishes. Sigurado ako na ito ang next spot na inyong tambayan. O ayan mga schoolmates, ilan lang yan sa mga patok na burger place para sa inyo. Ano pa ang hinihintay at mag burger hopping na with your barkada? Hanggang sa muli, I'll be your school buddy na sasagot sa inyong frequently asked questions. Only here at PP Fox. sense akin na friend tong screenshot. So, akala ko talaga nung una edited lang. So, hindi ako naniwala. And then, nung binerify ko, syempre naiyak. Nagiyak kami sa bahay ng parents ko. It was the best feeling talaga. Uh, I dreamed about it. I wanted it. But, I really did not expect na akot ako ng top. So, mahirap siya, actually. Kasi, sobrang tricky ng questions. Lahat ng choices sobrang similar. And then, sa review, parang 50% ng mabas than yung others based sa experience. For future examinees, uh, okay kayo magmadali and then ipon talaga na experience kasi sobrang valuable ng lahat ng lessons na natututunan sa real world sa trabaho. Nakaunang challenge na nakita ko ay na experience ko is ang daming mas magaling sa akin nung pumasok ko. So, parang nung una, nag-struggle talaga ako with self-doubt and uh, insecurities, ganyan. But, I took it as a challenge na not to compete with them, but to compete with myself. Uh, parang automatic kasi na pag pumasok ka na PUP, kailangan mo maging resourceful. So, and lahat naman ng professors sa uh, kaka, sobrang willing na uh, magbigay ng tulong in any way possible. So, uh, kahit naman naging struggle siya, uh, naging okay naman yung experience overall. Accept every challenge kasi you never know someday in the future, lahat ng matututunan mo from those challenges, magagamit mo. Just like nung exam, lahat ng mga akala ko dati, problema lang, or hindi ko kaya, lumabas siya sa board exam. Ako si Paolo Gabriel T. Mardires from the College of Architecture and Fine Arts, Top Ones Architecture Licensure Examination, the Top PUPN. Make sure that you are following our social media. 
Yeah, yeah. Tama ka dyan, Neil. Just search www.facebook.com slash PUP Creativity or follow us on Twitter at PUP Creativity. And don't forget to watch this episode and previous episodes on our YouTube channel at PUP Creativity at mag-subscribe na rin kayo, Scoopy. Correct. Ayan naman mga Scoopies, hanggang sa susunod nating usapan dito sa inyong paboritong online tambayan. Ito ang Pinaraw sa Usapan sa Pagkakasal! Dito ako ngayon sa Nino yung aking sasing. N-A-L-L-R, sinag building na ito? Everything you have to know. Kaya na, nagutom ako doon. Nagutom ako, burger, burger, burger! Parang nag-re-roll ko. Ano ba yan, Ma'am Giel? Yan, Ma'am Giel, yan, Ma'am Giel. Bakit na dalawa na lang tayo? Welcome to the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. The country's first polytechnic U. PUP is a state-run university governed by the Republic Act 8292, known as the Higher Education Modernization Act of 1997, and its implementing rules and regulations contained in the Commission on Higher Education Memorandum Circular Number no. 4, Series of 1997. It is home to more than 70,000 students, making it the largest state university in the Philippines in terms of student population. It is the university's commitment to give qualified and talented students access to quality and responsive education to aid them in the achievement of their dreams and the improvement of their lives. True to its commitment of making education accessible to all, the university has strategically established campuses and branches all over Luzon. of its roster of 1,483 full-time and part-time faculty members and 707 administrative employees. The faculty members and employees perform the collective goal of training, servicing, and supporting the university's stakeholders. From its humble beginnings in 1904, PUP was originally established as the Manila Business School primarily for the training of personnel for government service and to provide skills suited for private employment. Four years later, the Manila Business School was renamed Philippine School of Commerce or PSC and merged with the Philippine Normal School from 1933 to 1946. Through the virtue of Republic Act 778, PSC was renamed the Philippine College of Commerce, or PCC, in 1952. In April 1, 1978, PCC was converted into a chartered state university now known as the Polytechnic University of the Philippines by virtue of Presidential Decree Number 1341. PUP truly has come a long way from a business school to a premier polytechnic university the very first in the country. Every year, around 50,000 graduating high school students, mostly from economically challenged families, take the Polytechnic University of the Philippines College Entrance Test 
or poop set and hope to become one of the 10,000 who will be given a chance to be new PUPians. At present, the university offers more than 80 programs in the graduate and undergraduate levels with its strategic direction of making the colleges vertically articulated. Graduate School College of Accountancy and Finance College of Arts and Letters College of Architecture and Fine Arts College of Business Administration College of Communication College of Computer and Information Sciences College of Education College of Engineering College of Law College of Political Science and Public Administration College of Social Sciences and Development College of Science College of Tourism, Hospitality and Transportation Management College of Human Kinetics Institute of Technology PUP further strengthens its open university system through expanded tertiary education equivalency and accreditation program and the non-traditional system program. It caters to borderless educational system that aims to reach many learners as possible. For more than a century of existence, countless outstanding achievements have raised PUP to the level of a national comprehensive university. With a vision to transform the university into an epistemic community, PUP subscribes to the idea that a university should have an extensive research and extension development culture. Each year, PUP surpasses the national passing rate in licensure examinations and ranks among the top in different academic disciplines.
BUP has also institutionalized academic exchange and international cooperation with various countries all over the world through its Office of International Affairs. Today, BUP is relishing its successes and its students are enjoying unprecedented academic opportunities. An enhanced campus environment. Upgraded colleges. State-of-the-art technology. and nationally and internationally recognized programs. It has gone far from what it was more than a century ago. This is mainly due to the support given by the government, the PUP community, and its benefactors. With the combined efforts, PUP will continue to be a partner in nation building and in poverty alleviation for the marginalized sector of the society with quality, responsive, and relevant education as a tool. PUP, the country's first polytechnic U. Allow me to share with you my vision for the university. I envision PUP to become the pioneering and leading national polytechnic university in the 21st century. With a national polytechnic university status, it will bring more opportunities for the university to further strengthen its academic programs and improve organizational performance as an institution for higher education. In pursuit for this vision, my mission for PUP is for it to recognize its catalytic role for national development. PUP will ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities through a re-engineered polytechnic education. By re-engineering, we look into the existing processes and programs in order to achieve higher quality of academic programs and services following the principles of effectiveness and efficiency. With this mission in mind, I have formulated 10 pillars as my reform agenda for the university. Pillar 1, Dynamic, Transformational, and Responsible Leadership. Empower academic and administrative leaders by following the core principles of good governance to create collective growth and unity. Here I would like to highlight an innovation by introducing the development of an integrity management plan to assess, plan, and implement anti-corruption strategies that will secure the institution against corruption and abuse. Likewise, asset management and resource generation will be aggressively pursued to ensure productivity and finance the implementation of the plans and projects for the university. Pillar 2 responsive and innovative curricula and instruction. We aim to provide world-class polytechnic education that responds to national and global needs by developing intellectually challenging curricula and design academic programs that are based on industry demands to provide the learners with adequate and relevant competencies and skills and prepare them for a successful and rewarding careers. In a rapidly changing world, we recognize the paradigm shift in curriculum to outcome-based education with lifelong learning approach. Pillar 2 also sits on the framework of internationalization of Philippine higher education through transnational education 
by promoting academic mobility among faculty and students and global dimension into the curricula and teaching process. Pillar 3, Enabling and Productive Learning Environment. Following Education in Industry 4.0, we aim to increase and enhance the use of new technology to enable student learning and engagement, as well as advanced teaching process and methodology through new and state-of-the-art facilities that will support the overall learning and teaching experience in the university. Pillar 3 likewise includes campus development and the provision of conducive learning centers and facilities for students and faculty. Pillar 4, Holistic Student Development and Engagement. We will empower students as well as rounded learners and active young leaders as we open opportunities for various academic mobility and venues for honing skills and personal development, being the principal stakeholder of the university. Recognize academic freedom as a form of self-expression and a platform to showcase students' intellect, skills, and creativity. Pillar 5 empowered faculty members and employees. Likewise, we are looking into the holistic development of our faculty and employees as productive, competent, and experts in their respective fields. We will encourage our faculty roster through formal education, capacity building, research and extension initiatives, faculty immersion, and other academic engagements, both local and abroad. We will ensure that both our faculty and employees will have a vibrant career development path as public servants in this state university. Pillar 6, Vigorous Research Production and Utilization. We will continue to strengthen the research culture in the university by promoting discovery and innovation through increasing disciplinary and collaborative research integration across academic disciplines to create new knowledge utilize research findings, and develop innovative products. Pillar 7, Global Academic Standards and Excellence. Achieve the highest levels of recognition in quality and compliance standards from CHED, AACUP, and other international accrediting and regulatory bodies for higher education. We will intensify our efforts to achieve and sustain better academic performance and continue to excel as a top-performing school in various professional licensure examinations and produce board top notchers as well as sustain our status of being the most preferred graduates of employers. Likewise, we aim to establish and to be recognized as centers of development and excellence in our academic programs. Pillar 8, Synergistic, Productive, Strategic Networks and Partnerships. Synergize and force strategic linkages in partnerships across all sectors of society and the global community in line with the overall plans and programs of the university. Establish alliance with the government, industry sector, NGOs, and the academy will lead to resource sharing, program support, and research collaborations beneficial for all. Pillar 9 active and sustained stakeholders engagement. Harness a healthy and harmonious organization by empowering all its stakeholders, both internal and external, through open communication networks, consultative and participative undertakings, and team building activities, recognizing that all stakeholders can greatly contribute towards the betterment of the university. Pillar 10, Sustainable Social Development Programs and Projects. Expand access to education, knowledge building, and information dissemination through sharing of expertise and resources for community development. Support inclusivity approach in education by embarking on Education on Wheels, which aims to bring access to education closer to communities, following the principle of no one will be left behind. As the University of the People, we should bring the university closer to their hearts to serve their needs and extend assistance in mainstreaming public service.
our institution must continue to stand as one for the values that we have inculcated. For the past 115 years, we have exemplified our quest for truth, excellence, equity, relevance, effectiveness, integrity, and academic freedom. Lastly, I call upon each and every one to join me in this journey. Together we stand as one para sa sintang paralan para sa ating bayan. Noon pa man, malaki na ang naging bahagi ng mga kababaihan sa lipunang Pilipino. Kaisa sila sa marubdob na paghahangad ng kalayaan ng ating lahi. Kabilang sila sa paglinang ng ating makulay na sining at mayamang kultura. Kasapi sila sa pagtataguyod ng mga adhikain ng kapwa mamamayan at sa pagtugon sa mga pangangailangan ng lipunan. Katuwang sila sa pagtukla sa mga larangan ng agham at medisina. Kapanalig sila sa pagpapairal ng batas, karapatan at katarungan para sa lahat. Kabahagi sila sa paglilingkod sa bayan at sa pagpapanatili ng demokrasyang Pilipino. Sa paglipas ng panahon, hindi nagmaliw ang kanilang pag-ibig sa ating inang bayan. Mga kababayan, ito ang alay ng mga kababaihang Pilipino para sa bayan. Tumayo po tayong lahat at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
Hi, I'm Engineer Florinda H. Oquindo, Director of the Alumni Relations and Career Development Office. The role of our office is to keep connections among students and alumni, provides complete range of services to students, alumni, and employers in the area of career development, graduates and professional schools preparations, employee relations, and campus recruitment. We also provide alumni and students with the tools and resources to help find success in all professional endeavors. To all freshmen, please come and visit us. Our office is located at N209 North Wing, 2nd floor. So isang magandang umaga mga ka-squad case ka sa ating mga estudyante na nanonood ngayon sa atin sa ating live sa PUP, P, PUP Career Center Facebook page. May good morning, good morning guys. Sa atin naman pong mga participants via Zoom, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Sa ating industry partner who were with us today, andito po ang China Bank, andito po ang N4. We also do have Oracle. Tapos, kasama rin natin ang Metro City AI at uh, Metro City AI para at Nesda pala. Sorry ah, muti ko pa makalimutan. Sorry naman po. So, at ang Nesda para punuin at busugin na naman tayo sa mga bagong kaalaman tungkol sa area of career development office. So, the Alumni Relation and Career Development Office provides services and assistance to the students and alumni as well in support for the area of career development and sustaining its link to your potential employer and providing you an employment opportunity. So, this career development webinar aims to help not just improve one, uh, one's career, but we also wanted to help you grow professionally well as personally. I hope that the new learnings and knowledge that you can acquire during this uh, training and during this webinar can help you shape and develop you in your one's career or in your career objectives. So, sa ating pong mga sujante, galing po si, sa mga branches and campuses, good morning, good morning, guys. At sa atin naman pong mga sujante na galing sa PUP Main. By the way, our host college for today's webinar, this month's webinar, is the College of Computer and Information Sciences, well as the College of Social Sciences and Development. Pero syempre, andito po ang ating hindi nagsasawang mga taga-college of education para suportahan ang ating webinar. So, merami rin po tayo. We also do have from PUP, uh, SMB, PUP na guy. SMB is short for Santa Maria. Tama po ba? So, good morning, good morning guys. Pasa... Uh, Pa-extend na lang po ang, ang pasasalamat namin sa inyong direktor na, sir, na si Sir Arman sa pagpapahintulit nyo sa pag-attend dito sa Career Development Webinar na to. Well as, andito rin po ang PUP Ragay. So, pa-extend po sa inyong mga direktor and academic heads and official ang aming pasasalamat. So, in behalf of the Alumni Relation and Career Development Office, Maraming salamat po. So, syempre, hindi natin pwedeng kalimutan yung mga sujante na umaaten po dito kahit hindi sila PUP yan. So, greetings daw from the NTC College. So, dahil live tayo sa Facebook at hindi lang po so mga ating kinikater, marami po or ma ka yung mga feeds natin, ibig sabihin yung mga live videos natin sa Facebook, anytime pwede nyo pong browse at pwede nyo pong panoorin. And by the way, we also do have a good news. Meron po tayong PUP 
or arc.tv kung saan pa-like naman po at pa-subscribe para updated kayo sa mga new videos. At the same time, kahit pa paano, di ba? Malay nyo, yung mga topic doon ay makatulong sa inyo, hindi lang, ah, hindi, hindi, hindi man sa ngayon, pero in the near future. Okay. So, bago natin umpisahan ng lahat, atin munang i-share ang webinar etiquette natin. Okay. So, sabi ko nga kanina, meron tayong dalawang participants for today's webinar. So, ang ating, ang, ang participants natin for today's webinar is our Zoom participants. So, kayo yon. So, guys, good morning. Good morning po. So, alam, alam ko malapit ng face to face. So, dahil malapit ng face to face, lahat kayo excited na. Pero, pero bago tayo mag face to face, syempre, umpisahan muna sa hybrid. So, next time, baka ang maging career development webinar natin is hybrid na po. So, habang yung iba is nasa face to face, kayo naman po nanonood sa inyong mga uh, naka-livestream na naman kami sa, sa mga Facebook page. Okay. So, for our Zoom participants, always remember that to keep your microphone always on mute while this webinar proper is ongoing. And always remember that this webinar is on live stream. So, we'll be having your Q&A portion after po ng ating speaker. You may raise your hand or pwede rin nyo man, rin, nyo rin naman gamitin ang Zoom chat para maka-interact maka with our speaker. So, lahat po ng question will be attended by our speaker at the end po ng kanyang talk. Para naman po sa ating... Para naman po sa ating... Same participants. Ito naman po yung mga participants natin sa PUP Career Center Facebook page. So, good morning. Good morning, guys. You may also use the comment section. You just have to introduce yourself with your name, course, year, and section. Kasi minumonitor din namin at tini-include din namin yung mga insights nyo, question and suggestion nyo during the webinar. Okay, para sa lahat po, Please make sure to accomplish the evaluation form flash at the Zoom chat or in the comment section of the live stream para po makareceive kayo ng digital certificate nyo that will be released 2 to 3 weeks after the conduct of the webinar. Pero ito po ang, ang, ang GISA. This form is only accessible 6 hours after the webinar. So, dapat po... Six hours after the webinar, masagutan nyo agad yung link. Kasi this uh, digital certificate will be given to those who attended, participated, and accomplished the evaluation form at the end of the session. So, yung... So, yun po ang ating etiquette para po sa ating... Uh, event ngayong maghapon. By the way, maghapon po na naman tayong magkasama kasi maghapon po ang ating webinar. Marami po kaming inihandang or marami pong inihandang uh, information, knowledge, and new skills ang ating industry partners para sa inyo. So, to start the, to start the, the program, Ito po ang unang industry partner natin. Papakilala po natin sila sa pamagitan muna ng, ng ABP nila. Then later, ipapakilala ko po sa inyo ang kanilang speaker. Turning on your lights, catching up with friends, home deliveries, receiving healthcare, some of your most important moments in life, big and small, are made possible through Oracle technology. If you join us, you'll be part of an elite team who help the world's most recognizable brands do what they do best. More than 400,000 businesses around the world trust Oracle to run their mission-critical operations. Like the world's largest bakery, in a single day, Grupo Bimbo uses Oracle Cloud to produce and transport 13,000 types of products 
by some 53,000 routes. Industry disruptors like Zoom rely on Oracle to innovate in the face of change. When it had to quickly scale in early 2020, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure was able to get them where they needed to be. With the industry's broader suite of cloud applications, our customers can use emerging technologies to act on real-time insights. That's why when the Premier League wanted to get fans closer to the action, it chose Oracle Cloud. Now you can see inside the beautiful game like never before. Meanwhile, Oracle technology is helping African nations like Ghana save lives with a cloud-based vaccination system. Here, your work will do more than transform the world of business. It will power nonprofits and give billions of people the tools to outpace change. Go beyond what's been done before in your career. Create the future with us. Okay, so our first in this partner is an American multinational computer technology corporation headquartered in USA. So Austin, Texas to be particular. So Oracle is one, uh, was the third largest software company in the world by revenue and market capitalization. So the company sells database software technologies, particularly the cloud, uh, cloud engineering system, enterprise software products, such as enterprise research planning, human capital management, customer relation management, and customer experience. Kasama, rin din, kasama na rin po ang enterprise performance management and supply chain management software. So, Sa ngayong umaga po, ang mga kasama natin ay si Miss Tama po ba? Miss Bernabe kami to discuss about identifying career goal 101 and Oracle recruit recruitment session. She is a highly motivated motivated HR professional with over 5 years of experience in financial services and technologies and technology industry. Equipped with acknowledge in recruitment, compensation and benefits, employee relation, learning and development with an exceptional problem solver when it comes to managing and resolving issues related to HR. So let's welcome Ms. Kame Vernabe, representative of Oracle Philippines Corporation. Good morning, ma'am. Morning, Miss Jane. Thank yes, you for the introduction. Iba yung tayong nabigay na pangalan ng <laughs> akin. Okay so, lang po. No okay. way. <laughs> I can share my screen po. Ay, okay ma'am. Sige po. I-grant ko po yung permission to share your screen. Wait lang po. Alright. Okay ma'am. Ito na po. Alright. Thank you, Miss Jane. Okay. All right. Good morning again, everyone. I'm Kami Bernabe, Campus Talent Acquisition Specialist of Oracle. Welcome to Oracle's Campus Recruiting Information Session. We are so happy to be here. Thank you, PUP, for inviting us. So I am here today to help you identify your career goals as you will soon embark on a new journey as fresh graduates. So as a new graduate, it is typical to want to make a good head start. Defining your career goals is the key to getting ahead professionally. Knowing and setting your goals would act as your compass as you go through the real world. We'll outline the steps that career-savvy professionals can take to define and begin reaching their career goals. We will also discuss how equally vital it is to build and start your career with an organization that will help you grow. All right, so to break the tension, let's have a quick icebreaker. So just send the reaction based on what you feel about today's topic. So thumbs up if you already thought about it, but you're here to get more ideas. Face with tears of joy if you don't know what's next for you. Red heart if you have already set your career 
are your goals and ready to rock the corporate world. And then lastly, party popper if you have no plans yet and still enjoying your vacation. Ayan, I can see some. Keep them coming, guys. Okay, so far, parang puro thumbs up. All right. Thanks, guys, for participating. That was a fun way to get a little bit about you guys. So our first agenda to formally start the discussion is to define what is a goal. So according to our ever-reliable Webster Dictionary, a goal is defined as an objective or target that someone is trying to reach or achieve or an aim or objective that you work toward with effort and determination. So in layman's term, a goal is an idea of the future or a desired result that a group of people wants to achieve. So there are several kinds of goals. So um, there are personal goals, relationship goals, financial goals, academic goals, etc. But for today's discussion, we're going to talk about and focus on one particular kind of goal, which is career goal. So what are career goals? These are goals that are specific or pertains to your professional life. They are targets that you define and set related to your career. It is actually where you see yourself in the future. So career goals carve the direction of how you would like your career to move forward and how you're going to get there. Now that we have a clear definition of what a career goal is, let's talk about career planning or career mapping. So career mapping refers to your long-term strategy to achieve your career goals. Having a career plan is great for several reasons. First is it will help you improve yourself. It will also push you to pursue your dreams and provide you with clarity by simply knowing what you want and where you want to go. In short, career mapping is your path to success. However, it's important to remember that success looks different to everyone. Whether your goal is to retire by 40, be a stay-at-home parent, or start your own business, all dreams are valid and it will take planning to make them a reality. So for today's discussion, I will walk you through these four points. Setting your career compass, visualizing and identifying your career goals, outlining and setting of time-bound goals, and lastly, using the SMART method as your guide. First is setting your career compass. So the first thing to do is to actually start looking at yourself. Try to figure out who you are, what motivates you, what your values are, and what is important to you. So again, we have different perspectives on what success is and that ultimately directs what will be the career goals you would want to achieve. So ask yourself which skills and values will enable you to achieve that success. Try to make a list of your strengths, weaknesses, and personality traits to help you set parameters. So when you know these already, align them with the vision and measure your progress periodically. This will serve as a foundation that you can use in choosing the career path that you want to pursue based on your interests and characteristics. So keep in mind that your values are unique to you and essentially will serve as your moral compass. If you align your career goals with your values, they can be great motivators as you build the life that you want to live. Next is to visualize and identify. So visualize where you want to be in a set number of years. Don't just say generic things like, I want to be a manager or I want to be rich. You have to be specific. For example, um, I want to be a manager and lead my own team in five years. So in this way, you're also manifesting your way in reaching that career goal. Identify what you want to achieve in your career. 
make a list of the things that you want to achieve. There's really no specific format that you have to follow since your goals are also evolving as you get older. For example, you could write, I want to land a position in an IT company as an associate developer, be an expert in this field, and um, launch the next big product in cloud computing. Or you could also say, I want to start my career in FMCG and eventually take MBA abroad. So once you have your list, close your eyes and imagine what your future will be like if you achieve all of these. How does it feel? How would not achieving this goal impact your future? So this exercise will help you identify which goals you truly want to pursue and makes them more tangible. Another practice that you could take advantage of is learning how to outline and set time-bound goals. So during the earlier exercises, you already have thought about yourself, what you want, and where you want to be. So now is the time to determine the timeline of your career goals. So think of your long-term goal as your top goal. Short-term and medium-term goals serve as the stepping stones that brings you closer towards your top goal. So when you start with long-term goals, they should have been broad and um, it might require multiple requirements in order to achieve those types of goals. Secondly, consider medium-term goals as stepping, to stepping stones that bring you towards your long-term goal. Short-term goals, on the other hand, should be those that are most easy to achieve. These are goals that can be accomplished immediately and put you in a position to achieve your larger goals. So let's discuss the importance of setting time-bound goals. So just to define it, time-bound goals would allow you to set goals based on the length of time that you should be able to achieve this. So you might ask yourself why this is important. Most often, people would set goals that are too far away in the future. For example, when you were still in high school, you would dream about becoming a teacher, a doctor, a pilot, or whatever profession you have thought about when you were younger. So that's actually a great mindset to have at that age. However, most people at this age would lose focus along the way. Why? Because when you think about it, it seems too far away beyond your current capability and might look impossible. And that is how this approach will help you. Identifying your goals based on a timeline will help you dissect your goal into bite-sized pieces or attainable milestones that eventually leads to achieving your larger goals. So in a nutshell, your time-bound goals should follow the following concept. For your short-term goals, these are the goals that you could achieve from now until a year. Medium-term goals may take two to five years to achieve. And lastly, long-term goals are those that may take around eight to 10 years. So planning beyond 10 years may not seem wise I, as we cannot fully anticipate how much the world will change by that time. So as, um, a while ago, I've told you that we're going to use the SMART method as a guide. So the idea of setting goals can be overwhelming, but there are some tools to help you. And the SMART method is one of those is one of the most common tools that people use. So it stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So basically, ideas are broken down into smaller pieces that can be easily managed. So for specific, in order for a goal to be effective, it needs to be specific. A specific goal answers questions like, what needs to be accomplished? What steps do I have to take to achieve it? Thinking through these questions help get to the heart of what you're aiming for. For measurable, making your goals specific is a good start, but you have to make sure that they're measurable because this will make it 
easy for you to track your progress and know when you've reached the finish line. Next is attainable. This is the point in the process when you give yourself a reality check. Goals should be attainable and realistic. So ask yourself, is this something I can reasonably accomplish? Next is relevant. So a relevant goal is one that really matters to you. Here's what you need to think about. So why are you setting the goal that you're setting? So you have to go back to your purpose and reflect if this is really something that you want to pursue in the long run. Lastly, time-based. A goal should be grounded within a defined period of time, both for clarity and to give you action urgency. So ask your questions, when will you start? What's your timeline? At what point can you say that you're already finished and you've already reached the goal that you want? Smart goals have time-related parameters so everybody knows how to stay on track and also to track of your progress. So we don't stop when we have already identified our goals, but instead we continue to monitor and track our success. So you have to set a number of targets to reach along the way to your career goal. So this keeps you on the roadmap to success. Think of your journey as a series of small steps and not one large leap. Reward yourself for every goal that you achieve. And if you fall behind for any reason, see where you can make improvements and whether you need additional support. Lastly, don't measure your progress using someone else's ruler. So do not compare. This is not a race. We each have our own timelines. To nicely wrap up our discussion and as a parting idea, let me remind you that career goals are your pathway to success. Learning how to identify the correct goals for you and planning how to move forward will immensely help your career in the long run. However, career goals are not set in stone. Not achieving them on your desired timeline does not mean that you're a failure. The good thing about career goals is that you could always revisit, adjust, and refocus on what you want to see in your future. Setting goals is a lifetime discipline as you complete one milestone to another. These goals will give you your life's purpose and meaning. Now, allow me to talk to you about the organization we belong to where we are more than happy to help you achieve your career goals. Here in Oracle, your success story starts. So earlier, before I started my talk, you already had a teaser of who we are and what we do. So now let's talk about some of our impact and industry leadership. So we are the only technology vendor that offers both an integrated suite of cloud applications and a cloud infrastructure platform designed for what's next. Our Oracle Cloud was built from the ground up to offer the most complete integrated cloud solution for the enterprise. We've also embedded innovative tech like AI, machine learning, and blockchain into every aspect of our cloud. We're also the world's largest provider of cloud applications. Businesses use our applications to inspire the workforce, nail the financials, optimize the supply chain, and create awesome customer experiences. And this is all made possible through the work of our people. So 133,000 talented employees from all around the world, all working together to fulfill our company mission, which is to transform our world for the better through innovative technology. Given we're a B2B company, most individuals are not aware that they are using Oracle technology and that it is already impacting their lives every day. When I play word association about Oracle, the 
outdated answer that I always hear is databases. While we're proud of this heritage and pedigree, our evolution has steered us to be the world to be the world's first autonomous database cloud company. So should you join us, you won't just stay ahead of the curve, but you'll be the one creating. So over 40 years, we have evolved from database software to expanding the entire technology stack. From servers and storage to database and middleware through applications into the cloud. So we continue to innovate with the latest trends in the areas listed here, such as artificial intelligence, big data analytics, blockchain, cloud computing, cybersecurity, mobile computing, etc. So let's break this down further and see that Oracle is the number one provider of business software, application service, business analytics, database, data warehouse, marketing automation, middleware, and a whole lot more. We actually have a broad portfolio of solutions for companies across all industries. Aside from this, we also move quickly. We are making the fastest expansion of any major cloud player. Oracle Cloud is available globally from 39 cloud regions and we are adding new regions more than twice as fast as other providers. As you can see here, Azure, for example, simply do not have this coverage. In addition, we've pledged net zero emission targets. Oracle's goal is to achieve 100% renewable energy use in all its OCI data centers by 2025. Oracle also is the only firm that has a cloud for every industry. Now, look closer. What do you see in this slide? Essential services. So there is healthcare, banking, retail to buy food, and utilities for water and gas. On this slide, you can see how widespread our reach is in powering industries. We provide an essential service to every essential service provider, and we know that that is a very big responsibility. If Oracle goes down, banks go down, and electricity and mobile networks collapse. Without our services, our clients cannot function. So moving on, let's talk about your most prized possession in the world and probably the first thing that you look for when you wake up in the morning, your mobile phones. Almost all networks are being run by an Oracle software called Tekalek, which also manages backup switching networks. And I'm not just talking about database and middleware, but industry-specific software. Hence, when you post on social media, Oracle is powering those connections. Now, let's take a closer look at our customers. We have hundreds of thousands of clients in different industries, as noted on the previous slide. And I've listed here a variety of the more recognizable brands that our graduates work with across the following industries. Some of those are hospitality, construction and engineering, financial institution, automobile, telecommunications, retail, etc. Here are some of our local customers that are using Oracle technologies that you might be familiar with. It's important to note that Oracle is truly a global organization. You will likely be connecting with global teams every day. And your first connection point would be Oracle Philippines. So let's have a closer look at our operations here. So we started our operations back in 1990. And we have six offices scattered around in Makati. We currently have 3,200 employees and demand is expected to increase over the coming years. I hope this helps you better understand more about Oracle today. So let's now turn the conversation to you and how you can help us create the future. Our entire management team fully recognize that 
every good idea at Oracle comes from our employees. We are focused on building an inclusive, supportive environment where every employee is inspired to do their best work. So let's take a closer look at what that means. We think you'll enjoy making your mark on the world as part of the Oracle team. We have a range of programs for students and graduates based on the career path that you'd like to pursue. So we have three different paths, namely product development, global business unit, and Oracle next week. You can join our product development group to build cutting-edge technologies from the ground up. Our graduate program will prepare you for a customer-facing career in sales, solution engineering, or consulting with the chance to work across Oracle's award-winning products. Lastly, you can specialize your career with a role focused on Oracle NetSuite, which is the world's number one cloud ERP. Let's dive into product development. So join Oracle's product development team and build groundbreaking technology. This is a multi-year development program for engineers and developers with the opportunity to learn from and be trained by some of the brightest and some of the brightest minds rather and thought leaders in the industry. This team, the Product Lifecycle Management Solution, helps companies manage their product lifecycle from new product introduction to project execution, product maintenance, change management, and phase out. The PLM products are actually um, targeted for high-tech medical devices, industrial engineering, and other industry customers. We have internationally recognized customers such as Apple, Dell, GE, Huawei, and many more. We also have regional and mid-sized customers worldwide. Another path is under the Global Business Unit. You can join our team of product developers and consultants and learn how to deliver industry transformation. Our global business units combine industry expertise with the latest technology insights with the chance to experience a wide variety of technology, problem solving and analysis, and a good management team. Last path that you can pursue is through Oracle NetSuite. Kick off your career by learning how to empower customers with the world's number one ERP cloud solution. All graduates will participate in an initial three to six month enablement program focused on building product knowledge, consulting skills, and implementation proficiency through training and development. Your development is our top priority here in Oracle. We give you the freedom and the skills to write your own success story. What do we mean by this? First, it's our culture of learning. We offer all employees personalized learning paths to define your career aspirations and put development plans in place to achieve your goals. Next, the way we nurture your professional development. We use our own technology, Oracle HCM Cloud, to manage professional development. It helps open up the door to career con to career conversations and increases your visibility to new opportunities. We also focus on equipping our managers with the tools and resources to help you understand your strengths and development needs. In our annual survey, Oracle employees consistently give high remarks to their managers for helping them remove barriers to success. If you have the drive and ambition to grow, your manager can help you build the skills that you need in order to get to achieve your career goals in life. Our culture of belonging starts with inclusion. We believe that creativity comes to life when you have the freedom to be yourself and the resources to help you do it. Employee resource groups are a vital part of our culture. 
groups like Oracle Women Leadership, our LGBTQ Plus Alliance, and the Diverse Abilities Network give a voice to our communities and help us nurture diverse leaders. For example, Oracle Women's Leadership is active around the world with 117 countries and hosts 400 annual events, including our Emerging Leader Summit. At Oracle, we don't think your life shouldn't be on hold from Monday to Friday. Flexible working options gives you the freedom to do things your way and our work environment supports a healthy lifestyle. So this supportive nature extends to our communities. CSR is truly a part of our culture and continuously giving back through volunteering activities. We're happy to offer each employee the opportunity to volunteer up to 40 paid volunteer hours per year. Last year, we had a total of 132,800 volunteer hours. Oracle also donated $22 million to support 6,000 nonprofits through grants, sponsorships, and workplace in 50 countries. Aside from this, we are sustainability advocates. We have 44% reduction in absolute emissions since 2015, surpassing our 2020 goal of 20% reduction. Given you're at university, uh, let me share with you some points on education. So did you guys know that Oracle actually has two high schools? So we created and fully funded Punelope Oracle Secondary High School in South Africa and Design Tech High School on our own corporate campus in California. Although the current situation forces us to work remotely, our company culture can still be experienced virtually. You can expect the same engaging and industry-leading training as before. We are very fortunate that as a company, we have the infrastructure, collaboration tools, and company culture that accommodates flexible working and supports remote teams on a regular basis. I've discussed with you today that we are a trailblazing firm for the last 40 years that continues to lead the market and is changing the world through technologies and products. So much so that many of our competitors you see on campus are powering their businesses through Oracle Technologies, which leads me to ask, why work for companies using our technologies when you can join Oracle and help create that technology? Our recruitment process starts with an initial interview. For technical positions, you would be required to take an online assessment and the team will share with you the Oracle Online Assessment Guidelines. Upon receipt, you need to finish the exam within 48 to 72 hours to avoid any delays in your application. If you pass the initial screening and the assessment, you will undergo a series of interviews with the hiring managers. Once you ace all these assessments, you will then be endorsed for offer. Your recruiter will provide you a thorough discussion about the compensation and benefits that we offer. Please note that all processes are being done virtually and there's no need for you to physically go to our recruitment hub. We can also process your application ahead of time before your graduation. So here are the following benefits of um, that you'll be receiving when you decide to join Oracle. For the work setup, we are currently practicing a hybrid setup. Employees are classified as either assigned, flex, or remote work workers. We are also following the standard 40 working hours per week. For the compensation, one of Oracle's initiatives is to always provide support for hiring fresh graduates and 
we support and recognize talent by providing a competitive salary. On top of that, you'll also be receiving um, a monthly allowance, Christmas bonus, and 13 month pay. For the health and well-being, staying in good health physically and mentally is important to all of us. When you're here, you can only do your work at Oracle when you perform at your best. You'll be entitled to a health insurance worth 500,000 pesos with two free dependents. Aside from this, you'll also have access to dental benefits, employee assistance program, and an annual physical medical exam. So beyond health and medical plans, Oracle offers employees access to various financial security programs to help you plan for your future, whether through a retirement plan, life insurance, and um, employee stock purchase plan that protect your income during some of life's tougher moments. Lastly, Oracle offers various programs and perks to support your life events, work-life integration, and professional development. So we are offer offering education assistance program. In case you want to pursue an MBA or PhD in the future, we can shoulder a certain percentage for your course fees and textbooks, but keep in mind that the course that you have to take should be aligned with the work that you're doing with Oracle. Taking time off promotes good physical and mental health for our employees and Oracle encourages you to take regular breaks from work to relax and recharge your energy levels in order for you to improve your work-life balance. So Oracle also supports employees with time off on different occurrences as a result of personal circumstances. So I encourage you to follow us on social media, a quick look at Oracle Careers and our Instagram page will provide you with a very clear visual of our culture. I think this will change your perceptions of our culture and environment at Oracle. So again, Oracle is a cloud technology company that provides organizations around the world with computing and software to help them innovate, unlock efficiencies, and become more effective. We also created the world's first and only autonomous database to help organize and secure our customers' data. You may scan the QR codes as seen on your screen to know more about the opportunities that we offer to our fresh graduates. Thank you for your time today. Um, we really appreciate your presence here and we look forward to creating the future with you. Back to you, Miss Jane. Okay, ma'am. So, maraming salamat po. So, guys, pabigyan naman si ma'am uh, kami ba? Tama ba? Ma'am Bernabel ng isang mar... Yan, ang dami na. Hindi, hindi pa ako nagsasabi ang bigyan ng number 12 clap. Ayan na yan, mamo. Ayan na. Ayan na si Harp. Ayan na si, si clap. Okay. So, guys. So, ma'am, open po ba ang Oracle for OJP? Um, as of now, Ms. Jane, unfortunately, we don't offer any internship opportunity since it's still in the works. We're still doing... um. Uh, documentation since marami pang kailangan i-consider. But definitely in the future, since we're working on it, magkakaroon na din. So as of now, we have available opportunities for fresh graduates. So as I've mentioned earlier, uh, you can visit Oracle Careers to view all the openings that we're currently offering. And in those openings, you can also see the complete uh, job description so that you'll already have an idea of what you're getting into and what the job entails. Okay. Para naman po, puro IT lang po ba, ma'am? Hindi ba po pwede yung ibang course sa inyo? So, so syempre hindi po, Ms. Um, Jane. This is actually open to all courses. So, there are certain positions that requires um, IT, computer science, computer engineering, or tech courses. But we also have um, openings that are open to other courses. Kahit education, tourism, 
um, science, kahit anong course mo, open yun. Hindi siya limited to business and financial lang. So as I've mentioned earlier, um, we have openings under the Oracle NetSuite um, group. So we have education consultant and technical support engineers. So for educational consultant, your Um, main responsibility is you're going to deliver a uh, tailored training to our clients. So in layman's term, kunwari PUP yung ating client and kunwari si PUP um, nag-ask siya na kami yung gumawa ng enrollment system. So in that case, yung education consultant will be the middleman Um, with PUP and kayo yung magtuturo kung paano ba gagamitin yung system na yun through um, tailored trainings. So that's one of the openings that we have that's open to all courses. And then we also have um, technical support engineers. So dalawa siya, it's classified into two. The first one is for tech roles. So again, computer science, IT, um management information systems and the likes and then the other one is for non-tech roles so it's open to business or any financial um related course so what you're going to do is you're going to take calls um this is more like an after sales support so um ang kausap niyo dito are end users and you'll be providing them with guidance regarding their concerns So ayun, to sum it all up, everyone is um, open to apply in Oracle. Again, you can just head on to our careers page to know more about those openings. Okay, so guys, narinig nyo yun ha? Hindi lang daw ang Oracle pang, pang IT, hindi lang daw pang engineering, kung hindi pwede rin sa College of Education at sa kahit anong course. So masaya ba kayo doon? Yung mga taga ibang, yung ibang course dyan? Ayan na mo, may, may heart na sila. Okay, kasi syempre mami yung iba ang iniisip nila dahil uh, hindi sila related sa IT, hindi sila uh, hindi sila computer related or hindi sila ganun ka uh, literate pagdating sa computer technology. Parang yung iba kasi pinanghihinaan ng loob na mag-apply. Mm-hmm. sa isang technology company just like yours. So, at least ngayon, kahit pa paano, alam na nila na sa isang industry, hindi lang kung ano yung nature of business ng isang industry, yes, okay. yun yung hinahanap nila. Kung hindi, marami pang nakapaloob doon. Kaya nga, gaya nga nang sabi niyo, ma'am, meron kayong college, pwedeng mag-apply ang galing sa College of Education. ba diba, guys? At least yun, multinational company. Tama ba? So, malay natin may mga taga-PUP na nasusunod ng mga taga-College of Education, College of Business, College of Science sa Oracle. Tama, sana ma'am. Sana in the near future. Meron na po actually. Meron ah. na. Yes. Wow. We have some, ano na po, new hires from PUP. Wow, that's great. So, maraming salamat ma'am. So, guys, may tanong po ba tayo kay ma'am? Ah, may tanong po po tayo bukod sa internship at OJT. Pwede po, ayan. Ma'am, saan daw po ba ang office nyo? So, um, we have different offices in Makati. But um, for Oracle NetSuite, it's in Ayala North Exchange. I don't know if you guys are familiar. That's in front of the RCBC building. And then, meron din kami sa Zuwilig. So, really depends on your line of business kung saan kayo maka-assign. Since, as mentioned earlier, we have six offices scattered around in Makati. Ayan, guys. Narinig niyo po yun. So, ano pa? May tanong po po tayo kay ma'am? Especially yung mga interested po na maging, uh, mag-apply ng Oracle. Ayan ma'am, thank you po. Maraming salamat. Okay, may tanong pa po ba? Or okay na tayo kay ma'am? Can you give ma'am a heart reaction? Ayan na ma'am, isang heart reaction siya Okay, ayan na. Ayan. So, ma'am, in behalf of the Alumni Relation and Career Development Office, maraming salamat in taking your time off and sharing with our Kaisko and Kaiska your expertise and experience. 
para po at least, di ba? Marami silang uh, marami silang na, marami silang napulot hindi lang sa Oracle. Kung hindi doon sa topic na diniscuss niyo. Di ba? At alam ko magagamit nila ito hindi man ngayon, magagamit nila ito in the near future sa kanilang pag-embark sa real world. Okay, maraming salamat ma'am. And I'll see you, ikaw po ba mamaya uli or si Miss uh, Gina? Si Grace po. Si Grace. Grace. Later okay. Okay. Sige ma'am. Maraming Thank salamat in the Hack of the Alumni Relation and Career Development Office. Thank you ma'am. Guys, isa pang masigabong virtual club. Ayan na. Thanks everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you ma'am. Sige po. Okay. Para naman po sa ating susunod na industry partner, nandito na po nandito na po ang ating susunod na industry partner. Saglit lang ha. Okay. So, our next industry partner is a partner or an naked um uh, an industry partner of the Alumni Relation and Career Development Office, particularly sa implementation po ng ating uh job fair na susunod or nagagawin natin this coming February this coming February. So to discuss about sorry naglolokoy yata ang aking video to discuss about the best practices to handle data and AI or the machine learning project. Let's welcome Mr. JR Castro of Metro City AI Incorporation. Good afternoon. Eh hey, good morning sir. Morning, Sir JR. Hello, po. Hello, Miss Jane. Yes, po. Morning, Morning. po. Ah, narinig niyo po ng malibu. Yes, sir. Audible naman na po. So, uh, Miss Jane, I'm going to share my screen. Then. Okay, po. You can share your screen and you can take the virtual floor na po. Wait lang po. Um, hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> um, good morning, everyone. So, my name is JR Castro. I am the CTO or Chief Technology Officer of Metro City AI. We are an AI, we are a startup AI based solutions company um, here in the Philippines. And so basically, we solve real world problems using AI. So, <laughs> wait, lang. I see you share it. Mm. So um, I'm also a machine learning engineer for about uh, three years now. I've been doing uh, projects for computer visions and NLP projects. So yung mga uh, facial recognition, um, ano ba ba? Um, car detection, um, uh, disease uh, recognitions, maganyan. And also, I've done some projects with uh, language translation, uh, chatbots. So, yun. Yun yung mga projects na nagawa ko <coughs> um, before. Um, so, uh, for today's discussion, um, I'll be presenting to you the importance of data handling in machine learning. But actually, um, maybe we need to kind of like step back a little bit so I can introduce what is machine learning in a very high level sense. <laughs> Ayun. So, um, so ano ba yung machine learning? Uh, machine learning is actually a subfield of AI, which is broadly defined as the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent behavior. So, sa madaling salita, in my experience, actually, machine learning is just a machine learning from data. So that's why um, data handling is very important in machine learning itself. Kasi uh, doon siya natututo. So 
Okay, um, at a, uh, machine learning is a part of AI, pero how does it work? Though? So how does machine learning work? So basically, um, yung mga sinuwang programmers, yung mga nagsimula ng machine learning, they created a complex algorithm which they call um, neural networks. So neural networks are actually are actually programs or you know created programmatically but based on the neurons of your brain. So dun siya nagbase. So ganito yung itsura niya in a graph form and then they did it programmatically and then they will serve it on a machine. And so so since yung machine na yun, meron na siyang neural networks in order for us to train yung neural network basically yun yung parang pinaka brain or utak ng machine nyo to run ai so first we need to train yung neural networks or most of the time we also call it um we also call it models machine learning models so yun minsan maririnig niyo yun if you're if you've been uh, reading a lot of machine learning stuff lately, so maririnig niyo yung uh, uh, machine learning models, language models, so different kinds of machine learning models lang. So yun. Um, and then sikat din sa machine learning, yung tinatawag nilang training because training is actually the term they use for the machine to learn from data. So for example, here, this is actually very high-level sense lang. <laughs> so um, we will create Later on, we will create uh, a machine learning model that can detect a cat or a dog. And para lang mapakita rin sa inyo yung buong process, yung buong workflow ng machine learning. So in here, um, we will train the machine to detect a, dog, a cat or a dog. So first, we will feed in um, an image of a dog to your computer or your server. And then it may output a cat or a dog. But since it's still in training or it's still learning, um, it will calculate itself and do some adjustments dun sa mga dun sa neurons na tinatawag niya inside dun sa computer. So next time na you will feed an image of a dog, you will get the right results. So yun siya. So I just wanted to explain what machine learning is for some uh, students here and some people here that doesn't really know what is machine learning. Pero, ayun, uh, machine learning is actually, um, I can define machine learning yung mga nakikita nyo sa TikTok or sa IG, yung filter, yung nagiging aso yung mukha nyo or gumaganda yung mukha nyo, nag nagkakaroon ng uh, filtering, uh, pumuputi, and also yung um, stable diffusion, that's a kind of machine learning model that can create um, that can create an image from scratch out of text prompt. So, ayun siya. So, later on, um, I can also show you some samples. So, yeah. So, but actually for today's discussion, um, I'll be presenting to you the data handling in machine learning. So, ano ba yung data handling? Um, data handling is actually a set of processes that includes data collection, data cleaning, and data preparation. So, ayun. Um, very important tong data handling kasi, like I said earlier, machine learning learns from data. And it's one of the main reasons why booming yung AI industry or machine learning industry all over the world is because we have so much data. Ito yung era na sobrang dami nating data. It's literally called big data kasi in a sense na sobrang dami nating data na collect every minute. Like just for example, sa Facebook, we have 100,000 100, of data per minute and what more per hour, di ba? So ayun siya. So since um I'll be presenting data handling, I'll um, explain each and every processes here. So let's start with uh, data collection. Ayan. So data collection is the process of gathering and measuring 
information on variables of interest. So, ako, I firmly believe that each and every people here in our meeting has done um, data collection. Kasi it, data collection is basically just, from the term itself, collecting data. So, yun, later on, malalaman nyo kung bakit paano kayo nagka, nagkaroon ng data collection in your life. Kasi it's very literal lang naman siya. So, ayun. Um, so, I can cite some examples. So, like, for example, uh, one example of data collection is, remember when we are, during the pandemic, pagpapasok ka ng mall, we need to fill up a contact tracing form, which you need to write down your name, your address, your number. So, that that uh, contact tracing form is actually a form of collecting data. So they collect names, addresses, and numbers. So para kung magkaroon ng COVID yung, during that time, makakontak kayo. Di ba? So, ayan. So, it, I'm not saying it is used for machine learning or other other um, stuff. <laughs> Pero I'm saying this is a form of data collection. And if you remember sa Facebook dati, uh, merong, um, ano tag dito? Merong tag your friends, which is itatag mo yung friend mo via their face and tas isusulat mo kung sino sila, di ba? So this, this is actually a form of data collection. And it's a very good form of data collection in terms of facial recognition. Kasi unang-una, um pinasulat na nga yung pangalan sa iyo itatag mo pa yung face nila so ito yung it, this is probably one of the main reason why facial recognition in your mobile apps or any facial recognition apps has been very accurate kasi di ba isipin mo before um every post mo ng picture itatag mo yung friend mo so that's an, that's every tag of every tag friend of yours eh that's one data for facebook so ayun siya <laughs> um and kung mapapansin niyo wala nang tagging ng face sa facebook siguro kasi they have so much data that you know it's very accurate enough like uh you know um maybe they have they use it for for metaverse or something else Pero yun, they have billions of data. So, um, another form of uh, data collection is yung mga online shopping. So, like, for this one, for this example, makikita nyo na um, the customer bought or yung tinignan niya yung Philips Norelco, which is pangahit, kumbaga. So, um, Online shopping, like Lazada and Shopee, they collect data from your search, from your um, web search in their website. So, excuse me. So, ayun. Um, kada click mo sa website nila, they record it. Kung ano yung kinlik mong next, kung ano yung venue mong next, kung ano yung binili mo. So, they can have a recommendation system. So, Kung makikita nyo dito, um, customer who bought this item also bought these items, which is semantically the same, pang linis or pang tanggal siya ng, ng facial hair. Diba? So, ayun, uh, electric shaver, tweezers, uh, panggupit, uh, tapos hair trimmer, I mean, ear, ear and hair trimmer. So, ayun siya. So it can also be used for machine learning kasi um ang recommendation system is a kind of uh, machine learning model. So it's called it's actually called learning to rank but you know we will not be discussing that but it's a kind of machine learning. So um ayun siya. And then ayan sorry. So actually there's a lot more different methods of data collection. Um, we have surveys, which is yung typical na survey na um, ginagamit sa dati. Yung mga, yung, like for example, um, kung paano nila i-rank 
yung mga TV. Uh, uh, ano ba tawag doon? Yung ABS, CBN, and GMA dati. So nagsasurvey sila, um, ano po bang pinapanood nyo ito yung tanghali? Ito po ba? Ito po ba? So yeah, that's that's kind of data collection. Transactional tracking, um, ito yung minention ko kanina, but in terms of um, transaction, like for example, uh, bumili ka nito, so ilan yung binili mong ganito, tuwing kailan ka bumibili, sino yung mga bumibili ng mga ganitong um, um, yun tong items. So, yun. It can be raw data, I mean, it can be digital or uh, physical. So, ayun siya. Then interviews so and focus groups. So, alam nyo naman to, um so pwede ito sa mga HR, um, nakakollect sila ng data dyan, nakakapag-pull sila ng ng applicants para if ever kailangan nila ng isang um, employee, um, makakapagtawag sila agad kasi meron silang collected data. Ayun. And observation. So, observation itself is is not entirely data collecting. But if you observe something tapos nilist down mo siya either digitally lagay mo sa notepad or sinulat mo sa notebook, then it's a kind of data collection. So um, I can cite some example of observation. Here you can see, this means, I'm not verified yet. But yeah, uh, you can see here na um, it's called kagal.com, uh, sikat to sa data science world or machine learning world. Um, kasi they offer public data sets or yung mga data na available publicly. So yun. Um, ito this kind of observation that were collected manually. So as you can see here, paano ba papakita? Ayan. So. Um, nakikita nyo po ba yung screen ko? Sorry. Miss Jane, nakikita nyo po ba yung screen ko? Yung kagal.com. Aha. Uh -huh. Ito ba yun, sir? Opo, yes, sir. Nakikita namin. Um, ito yung new plant diseases? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, ayan. Okay. Ayan po. Visible po. Ayan siya. So, kung, kung titignan natin. Uh, ayan. So, these images uh, were collected manually. Um, tinignan isa-isa. Then, pinicture. <laughs> ayan siya. Ay, sabi ko. Ayan. Most of the time kasi, um, yung mga data na makukuha, it, it will, one way or another, it will start, you will need to start collecting manually. So, hindi siya lahat automated. Um, all of the dirty work or yung hard work comes from um, getting the data manually. Either um, either copying image from Google or creating your own image or you know uh, picturing via mobile phones. It's also a kind of um, data collection. So, yun siya. Ayan. And then, online tracking. Um, so, online tracking, um, kung mapapansin nyo sa sa Facebook, uh, mapapansin nyo kung nag-search lang kayo ng laptop or nag-search kayo ng, ng, ng let's say, sapatos, makikita nyo next time sa news feeds nyo, marami na kayo makikita uh, for sale na sapatos, for sale na laptop. Kasi um, they actually use tracking. So it's also a kind of machine learning model that um, used to it's it's kind of algorithm na it's also um yeah it's also called learning to rank so nirarank niya yung mga sinesearch mo kung ano dapat yung ipapakita sa yo the next time you have um you're on your facebook app so yun next is forms forms is um yung kanina pinakita ko yung contact tracing it can be also digital and uh, physical so yung kanina yung physical um, yung contact tracing forms pero meron ding digital forms na diba? yung contact tracing yung um, i-scan mo lang yung parang barcode or yung 
QR code. Hindi mapupunta ka sa isang Google Forms at tinatawag yun. Tila pang ngayon. So that way, uh, they can also collect data. So social media monitoring is exactly what I told earlier, which is online tracking as well. Pero kasi yung online tracking, it's a uh, wide variety. That's wide variety kasi pwede siyang Google search, pwede siyang YouTube um, search, pwede rin siya sa TikTok or sa IG. So, ayan. So, you might know now na um, yung machine learning, it's widely used mostly on the entertainment part. But I'm not saying doon lang ah, kasi marami din siyang use sa sa um, business part. So, yun. So, and let's move on. So, next would be data cleaning. Data cleaning is the process of fixing or removing incorrect, corrupted, incorrectly formatted, duplicate or incomplete data within our data set. So, um, explain ko lang. Yung data set, just an FYI or benefit of the doubt, a data set is just a collection of data. <laughs> so, yun siya. Kung marami kang data, it's called data set. Okay? So, yeah. Um, data cleaning from the world itself, um, you will just need to clean your data. Kasi, in machine learning, if it's trash in, trash out. Kung pangit yung data mo, pangit din yung ibibigay sa yung results. So, the more data you have, the more, the cleaner data you have, the more accurate data you will, uh, accurate results you will have. Okay? So, um, actually, magpapakita ka ng sample on, on uh, data cleaning. But first, um, I'm going to tell you that actually data cleaning involves fixing, spelling, or typo errors. So, madalas to sa mga forms, most likely sa mga physical uh, pag nagsusulat, di ba, it's, it's uh, prone to errors kasi nagsusulat lang. Um, standardi standardizing uh, data sets. So, ibig sabihin lang niya is um, you will you need to have a uniform data set. So, later on, papakita ko rin kung paano siya gagawin. And then, correcting mistakes such as empty fields. So, like for example sa let's just say yung sa contact tracing form no um meron dong hindi nagsasagot ng numbers i mean di, hindi siya naglalagay ng phone number or hindi siya naglalagay ng address so that's considered as an empty field so pwede rin sa um uh, dito sa excel sa excel file pwede rin siya doon um empty pagka hindi ka nagfill up ng isang row or isang cell so that's uh, considered as empty field. So later on, mapapakita ko rin naman. Um, then identifying duplicate data points. So sa machine learning kasi, we can't have duplicate data. Kasi um, when you're training a machine learning model and you have so much duplicated uh, data, pwede kasing maging bias yung machine learning model. Like for example, um, let's say you're building a machine learning model na that can detect cars o kotse, di ba? Tapos, yung data set mo, you have so many images of your own car. Parang 50% nung data set mo, kotse mo lang. So, most of the time, ang matidetect lang niya ay yung kotse mo. Kasi sobrang dami yung picture ng date ng kotse mo eh. Bias yung model dun sa binigay mong data kasi, I mean, bias yung model dun sa kotse mo kasi yung data ang binigay mo ay sobrang daming duplicates na sobrang daming images ng kotse. So, yun. I hope that makes sense. So, um, so in here, I have um, I have a CSV file. Actually, it's a yeah, it's a CSV file of Netflix titles. So, I got this. It's actually a public data set. I got this also from kagal.com. So later on, siguro pwede kong message sa inyo yung, yung URL together with the codes that I'll be presenting later on. So ayun siya. Um, there so siguro, pa, um, hello, nakikita nyo pa rin ba yung 
aking monitor. Hello? Um, Miss Jane? Makikita niyo pa rin ba yung monitor? Ah, okay. Ito pala yung chat. Sorry, hindi ako nag-zoom. Okay, see. So, um, if you're seeing my monitor, you should see right now um, Netflix titles. Okay? Data cleaning. Is that right? You see my monitor? Yes. Ayan yun. Thank you. Eh. Um, so, ito, um, yung website na to, it's called Colab. Google Colab. Colab or Colab. Collaboratory yung tawag sa kanya. So, actually, yung Google Colab, free siya for everyone na merong Google account. So, yun, free siya for everyone na merong Google account. Punta ka lang sa drive mo, G Drive. Tapos, pwede ka na mag-create ng Google account. Ah, ay, ng Google Colab. So, Google Colab can run um, Python anywhere. Basta meron kang internet, meron kang Google account, you can run Python anywhere. You can download um, you can download almost everything basta ka siya dun sa sa disk space ng uh, Google Colab mo. So, yun. So, yun. Uh, for today, I'm gonna download yung pinakita ko kanina which is a CSV file of Wait, uh, mapapakita ko ba sa inyo? So, ayan. Uh, CSV file of Netflix titles from Kaggle.com. So, basically, yung dinownload ko lang, it's just a bunch of data from Netflix. Um, so, ayan. So, let's run these codes. So yung una kong ginawa ay I downloaded the CSV file and then I'm gonna import some modules. So just to explain yung mga nandito, um, Python siya. It's running on Python and I'm reading the Netflix um, Excel file. Okay? So yan. Um, so yan. As, um, you can see here now we have um, rows and columns, di ba? So makikita nyo dito, we have show ID, type, title, director, cast, country, date added, release year, rating, duration, tapos listed in and then description. So itong, itong data set na to, um, it's basically just like an Excel file. So meron siyang rows and columns, meron siyang cells, meron siyang data. So, yun siya. And I think we have 800 or 8,000 or 800 na rows dito sa, sa CSV file na to. So, but we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you the first five uh, data here. So, as you can see here, um, merong, date, merong cells dito na walang laman. Um, Sa Python, tinatawag siyang NAN or NAN. NAN, so yung nakikita nyo itong hina-highlight ko. So, actually, this CSV file is not yet cleaned. So, I'm gonna show you how to clean your data para it can be used for uh, machine learning. So, ayun. So, first, we need to identify or analyze yung data. So yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina, um, makikita nyo na meron siyang missing values, which is yung NAN. And then, makikita nyo rin na sa isang cell, meron siyang multiple words. Like yung cast, makikita nyo dyan yung um, iba't ibang pangalan. And then, sa date added, meron siyang mix words like September, tapos may number, 25, tapos 2021. Diba? 
And then, yung duration, hindi rin siya pare-parehas. So, merong movie which is just 90 minutes. Pero yung mga TV shows, ang nakalagay ay two seasons, one season. Tapos, sa listed in, it's also multiple assigned words. So, yan. International TV shows, TV dramas, TV... So, for... Oops, sorry. So, dito, um, I'm, ga- I'm gonna show you how to clean this data. So, um, this is via Python. Ah. So, this is actually kind of like the real world scenario on how you clean the data. So, una, um, let's get the columns of this data set. And uh, as you can see, I'm oh, sorry, let's try it again. Ayan. Karo ng error. So, ganun talaga. Um, most of the time, siguro parang 50% of my work, nakakaroon ka ng error. Pero at least, di ba, nagagawa ko naman siya ng para. Ayan. So, um, una, let's list the columns of the data set. So, ID, type, title, director, cast, blah, blah, blah. And then now, uh, note down uh, potential issues that you will have to address in each column. So, ang gagawin natin dito, we're gonna run this, and then titignan natin kung anong column yung may missing values. Kahit isa lang siya or dalawa, let's see if it, if that column has a missing value. Okay? Tapos, uh, so we can see here that show ID doesn't have any Uh, missing column, same as type, title, but in director, 29% of the rows in that column has a missing value. So, ibig sabihin, medyo malaki yun. Medyo malaki yung uh, missing value dun sa column na yan. So, dito sa cast, 9% lang, country, date added, pero sa release year, wala siyang wala siyang missing value, but we have some missing values in rating and duration. And then, yun. So, paano ba natin na-address yung mga ganitong missing values? Um, actually, next, ang pinakaginagawa muna for data cleaning is analyzation. Di ba? So, analyze mo muna yung data mo kung ano ba yung dapat mong linisin. So, that's what we're doing right now. So, we're, uh, first, we did this. We checked the the first five um, rows via just, you know, eyeballing kung ano yung mali, ano yung nakikita natin. And then let's do it via code. So tinignan natin yung mean or average ng missing values per um, per column. And then next, let's study the data types of the columns. So, ayun, as you can see here, um, yung release year, it's an integer. So, ibig sabihin, number siya. So, ang gagawin natin, um, here you can see that all the columns have object as their data types, aside from release year. Sa pandas, um, either string or mixed type, numerical, and yun yung tawag sa, object means either string or mixed type. So, ibig sabihin, pwede siyang number, pwede siyang letters or words. So, yun siya. And uh, from our data set, you'll be able to tell which columns are strictly string or mixed type. String just means... Um, uh, paano ba eh? <laughs> String just means words. Para siyang ganun. So, yun muna for now. Para hindi kayo malito. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin for release year, we will actually uh, remove the release year since we do not need it anymore. So as you can see here, um, actually it's it's part of data cleaning to know when to remove a column kung hindi mo naman siya kailangan. Okay? So, ayan. Wait. Um, paano ko ba papakita sa inyo? Ah, sige. Later on na lang. Sige. Papakita ko, mapapa, mapapakita ko naman yung results later on. So, uh, for this column, uh, I mean, for this Uh, code, ang gagawin natin is we're gonna just remove the release here kasi it's an integer and that's something that we don't need in our data. 
or in our data set anymore. But in this code as well, um, we're gonna clean the data that has white spaces. So para sa, para sa mga hindi nakakaalam, yung white space ay basically para siyang ganito. May space muna sa unahan or may space sa dulo. So like for example, paano ba? Pag, pag, uh, like for example, kanina, nagkakopy ako ng, ng password ng Zoom meeting. Tapos meron siyang, parang ganyan siya. Tapos meron siyang white space dito. So nagkamali yung password ko. Kasi um, meron siyang um, white space sa dulo. So yun. Um, in our data set, we need to clean the data, syempre. And this is part of cleaning the data. We need to remove or strip down the white spaces. Okay? We're gonna run that one. And then next, we need to deal with the missing values. So ito na yung nakita nyo kanina na NAN values, which is non-values na tinatawag. So, um, so I listed down the columns that has uh, missing values, which is yung kanina, ito yung director, cast, country, rating, and date added. So, um, in data cleaning, there is actually two parts. Kung paano mo i-handle yung, yung missing values. One is, just delete that row. <laughs> kung meron kang, kung like for example dito, ito, itong, itong zero column, kung nan to, just delete that. So, that's one way. Kung you, you think that's not important, Let's delete all the non-values row. But there's actually the second way, which is just filling it up with nothing. So non-values is different with, um, with just a string. So ibig sabihin, yung non-values, wala talaga siya. Yung, if we're gonna fill up with like a space, then it's something. Okay, gets? So yung space, it's still a character in computer, di ba? Pero pag sinabi mong non-value, wala talaga siyang laman. So ganun yung difference. Okay? So, yun. Uh, so let's write that, uh, run this down. So ganun tayo mag, ano muna, um, mag fill up ng missing values. Let's just fill it up with, uh, let's fill it up with a space yung space na character. <clears throat> okay? And then next, um, next step would be see if there are any variables that you can obtain by extracting them from other variables. So in this example, um, as you can see here, we have date, date added. Diba? So actually, we can, we can um, extract other data from this one row only. So we can extract the month, the day, and the year. So pwede natin siyang pag into a new columns. So that's what we will do here. Let's run this. Out of range. Na, 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 na. Wait lang, ha? <laughs> Sorry ka nagkaroon tayo ng error. Ah, sure. So, let's run this again. Ayan. So, we want to show us. So, ayan. Um, as you can see here, we have date added. Um, and then yung month ay ginawa niya ng number, which is yung September. Then yung year added, which is 2021. And then, ano ba yung Ayun. Um, so yung code lang pala, it just extracts the month and the year added. So, ayun siya. Then you can see here, um, yung cast, hindi na siya NAN, <coughs> kundi parang white space na lang siya. Wala na siyang laman. Um, meron siyang laman pero spaces lang. Ito dito rin. Dito and dito. So, ayan, medyo 
mas malinis na yung data natin than before. So you can see here. And then next, um, so if you can also see here, now we have two types of data. It's either a movie or a TV show. And like I said earlier, um, we need to standardize our data set. So kailangan nating um, kailangan nating magkaroon lang ng uniform data set. Kasi, like for example, um, yung duration, 90 minutes, tapos yung duration ng isa, two seasons. So, di ba? Dapat at least minutes din sila parehas. So, ganun siya. Okay? So, let's try to, what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna um, remove, paano ba? Separate the types of uh, data set here. So, we're gonna have a movie data set and a TV show data set. Okay? So, that's it. As you can see here, um, we have all the types for TV shows. And you next, I... All the types here are just movies or films. Okay? And then, next part of the data cleaning is just um, getting the duration. So, as you can see here, Yung duration, meron pa siyang 90 minutes. I mean, M-I-N na nakalagay. So, kasi sa data cleaning, kailangan at least it's one object. So, ibig sabihin, kung number siya, number lang dapat siya. Okay? Uh, para magamit siya ng mas maigi sa, sa data science or machine learning world. Okay? Pero, syempre, meron pa rin exception like PG-13. Diba? Yun, yun talaga yung tawag sa kanya. Eh. Pero if we can lessen the data into... Paano ba yan? Parang, if we can simplify the data more, that would be better. And that's always better, actually. Then, so, let's run this. That. So, you can see here that uh, duration has been um, trimmed down to just the numbers. Ayan. And then um, next is um, same din pala sa uh, TV shows kasi nakita nyo kanina we have uh, two seasons, one season so we just need to trim them down to just the number. Seasons one, two so yun yan. <clears throat> next is um, so at Isingit ko lang, we're doing this autom automatically or kind of like automated kasi meron ditong thousands of data. So if you're gonna do this manually, sobrang hirap niya. And if you're gonna do this, um, if you're gonna do this on a, ano ba, on, on Python, mabilis siyang gawin kasi automated siya. So, yeah. This is, this is like the efficient way of doing uh, data cleaning. Okay? Uh, pero, I'm not saying hindi nyo pwede gawin yung manual work. Ha? Pwede yung gawin yun, syempre. Kasi doon naman halos lahat nagsisimula. Eh. Okay? So, um, so the next thing is, um, we're gonna see for the ratings, let's check kung yung mga unique data sa ratings. So, kukunin lang natin lahat ng um, data sa ratings. But we're good. We're just gonna get the unique values, okay? So I, I'm not sure if you can see it, but let me try to zoom it. Ayan. So um, yung mga unique values sa rating column, we have PG-13, PG, TVMA, TVPG, TV14, and so on and so forth. But napansin natin na Merong 7 to 4 minutes, merong 84 minutes, 66 minutes, which is, if we're gonna analyze it now, pwede mo masabi na, ah, dapat nasa ano to, uh, duration column, di ba? Kasi uh, TV ratings nga to eh, bakit merong minutes-minutes dito? So, ayan siya. So, for the Netflix shows, let's see this one as well. Kung meron siyang same, same nitong 7 to 4 minutes. And nakita naman natin na wala siyang duration na nakalagay dito. Like 86, I'm 84 minutes or 66 minutes. So what we're gonna do is first, check muna natin kung ano yung um, rows na merong incorrect ratings. 
So ito yung mga yon, um S5. Yung show ID niya is 5 S5542 and then ito ren kay Louis CK, puro yung Louis CK. So what we're going to do is yung mga ID na yon, ito pala yung kinuha pala natin yung ID. Um sa Python ni sa Pandas, Python Um, yung name, it's equivalent to ID. So, yan. Uh, kunin natin tong 3562, 3738, 3, 3747. Ayan. So, i-list down ko siya dito. So, ang gagawin natin ay um, lalagyan natin ng NR values yung rating nila instead of, papalitan pala natin ng NR word yung ratings nila instead of instead of um ano tag dito yung mga 86 minutes let's do that so anyway yung nr pala it's actually a term for non not rated so wala siyang ratings not rated yun yung ibig sabihin ng nr okay and then ayan so sa netflix netflix films naman yung mga TV, yung mga movies um Meron naman siya tinatawag na UR or unrated. Pero since we wanted to standardize our data set, um, gagawin natin yung UR or unrated na not rated, which is also not uh, NR. Okay? So if that makes sense, sana, sana hindi kayo naguluhan. But I'm just gonna run that. So makikita nyo dito, um, wala na siyang UR value. Meron na lang siyang NR. So, ayun. Ito, this whole process, um, this is available online. Um, I can, yeah, I can share it to you, I guess. Uh, anyone with link? So, I guess, okay. Miss Jane, okay lang naman siguro yung share to, no? Ayan. So, you can open that. You can run your own. <clears throat> um, data cleaning. So, yun. Basically, that's it for data cleaning mga, for data cleaning some um, CSV files or Excel files. You, that's how it's done via Python. So, yun. So, yun yung, ito yung kanina. But we can also do data cleaning for um, ba, for images. So, uh, meron kasi, like for example, um, if we're gonna build a computer vision model, yung mga nakakadetect ng face, facial recognition, nakakadetect ng kotse, nakakadetect ng cats or dogs, then um, you probably you will need an image, di ba? To collect. Tapos, ayun. So, um, we have, actually, just, this is just three types, but we have tons of uh, data cleaning for images. But this is just three types. So one is data cropping. Um, image, sorry, image cropping bala. So image cropping kasi it's, here you see that this may systematically restrict some information. Kasi in every photo, the muzzle of the gun is cut off. So cropping kasi siya. So ikakrop natin yung buong image kasi we need to standardize our data set. Kailangan yung image natin lagi magkakaparehas ng size. Kung 100 by 100 siya, dapat lahat ng image natin, 100 by 100. Okay? And one way to do that is to crop your images. So, ang problema, if you're gonna crop your images, magkakaroon ng, um, it will restrict information kasi yung ibang, katulad nito, yung muso ng mga tanks dito, hindi na siya nakikita. Di ba? Um, So, mawawalan ng information yung model natin to detect tanks kasi nakakat off lagi yung uso niya. So, in machine learning model, as much as possible, if you can give information as much as possible, that's better. The more the merrier sa machine learning. So, you can do this. Uh, ang paganda dito, you can crop it manually, pero if you have millions of images, diba, that's time consuming and that's inefficient. So next is what we call image squishing. This method theoretically maintains all the elements in your data set, 
but warps them instead of cropping them. So, ito yung parang resizing. Si resize mo siya sa 100 by 100, yung lahat ng image mo, para lahat ng data, andun pa rin. So, ito yun. So, nakita nyo, um, hindi na cut off, hindi na na-cut off yung muso or yung parang barrel ng tank. <coughs> yung muzzle niya. And then, ayun, sorry, yung next is image padding. Kung mapapansin nyo dito sa image squeezing, uh, squishing, nag, um, hi, nakukuha mo nga lahat ng data pero nag-iiba yung shape ng tank. Kat, di katulad sa image padding, kung ano yung shape ng tank nung original mo siyang kinuha from Google search or pinikturan mo, ganun pa rin siya. Pero they have all the same sizes. So, yeah. so um, I'm gonna show you Wait lang. Ito-download <laughs> pa pala ito. So, um, here, di ko alam kung if we still have time. <coughs> But here, uh, wait, run ko na lang lahat. Sorry. Yeah. Later on. Actually, itong, day, itong code na to, it's, uh, it's a machine learning model na to. So, gawa na tayo ng model ng AI that can detect cats or dogs. So, ito na yan. But I'm gonna also show you how we handle data in this code. So, ayan. Um, while actually waiting, and they actually, it's running. It's running now. So yun, um, as you can see here, uh, first what we did is we downloaded we downloaded a data set. It's called uh, Microsoft Cats vs. Dog. Let me check if I can show you that one. <laughs> Kaggle. Yeah. That's me. Yes and dogs. Microsoft. Ayun. Anyway, nasa Kaggle siya. Um, you can view it if you want. So, nag-download tayo ng data set. Ayun. So, ito siya. If you can go to Kaggle.com and search for Microsoft Cats vs. Dogs data set. So yun, uh, merong 12,000 files and for cat and 12,000 files for dog. We click that one. So you can see it's all dogs here, pero may may iba na humans. I mean, my dog pero may kasamang human. I'm not you can see this and So ayun. Run it here. So so first kung ginawa ay dinownload ko muna yung yung public data set. So it's a kind of data collection. <coughs> Probably the most efficient um data collection is download the public data set. Kasi syempre, da-download mo lang siya, hindi mo na kailangan magpunta ng hindi mo na kailangan mag-survey, hindi mo na kailangan mag-copy paste, di ba? Hindi mo na kailangan magsulat ng anything. It's all um it's it's not it's not cleaned yet, but at least you have the data already. Kailangan mo na lang siyang i-preprocess. Okay? So next is, um, I'm just gonna plot some data here para makita nyo kung ano yung parang random images sa loob ng um, data set natin. Ayan, so makikita nyo, um, this is a cat, 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 cat. Pero they don't have the same sizes kasi um, hindi pa siya clean. So like, I told earlier, um, standardizing your data set is very important. Kasi unang-una, machine learning will not work kung hindi standardize yung data nyo. Magkakaroon siya ng error. Okay? Then, as we can see here, um, 50% of our data is dog, which is 12,501. And 50% of, our, another 50% of our data is a cat, 
image, which is 12,500 there. And then, ito is just simply showing that um, we have cat and a DOM folder that has same as above, which is 12,501 images. Ayan. And um, actually, sa machine learning, we need to divide our data into two separate uh, folders or two separate types. Yung isa is for training, kung paano mo tuturuan yung data mo. Yung isa naman is for testing, kung kamusta ba yung, ay, paano mo tuturuan yung model mo, yun yung training data set na tinatawag. And yung isa naman is testing, kung paano mo siya, um, paano ba ito? Paano mo siya matetest? <laughs> Mababalidate, kung baga. Kung gumagana ba siya in a real world scenario, baka kasi mamaya, um, accurate siya, pero dun lang sa sa training data set mo. Kasi, syempre, dun lang, yun lang yung pinag-aralan niya, eh, di ba? Pag binigyan mo ba siya ng data na hindi niya napag-aralan, will it perform better? Will it have uh, good accuracy? So, yun siya. So, we need to split your data into two. And then, and then, eto na yung Tama. Ayun. So, ito na yung part kung saan we will standardize our data set. So, um, as you can see here, we have a target size of 150 by 150, which just means um, gagawin natin lahat ng images natin na 150 by 150 um, size. Yun yung magiging size ng image natin. And then, Meron din tang actually um, some other parameters here. Ito yung tinatawag na data augmentation. So basically, para siyang papagandahin lang natin yung image. Okay? So, uh, you can learn this later. Um, I'll actually uh, share this notebook or collab, Google Collab uh, link as well. But yun siya. Okay? And then, so ang gagawin muna natin dito sa code na to, um, it will transform everything into 150 by 150 cents. So let's plot some data para makita natin. So ayun, as you can see here, um, lahat na siya, lahat na ng data natin has the same size. So 150, 150, 150, and so on and so forth. So ayun, we standardize our data set. And then for testing or validation na data set, um, Siyempre, kailangan din natin siyang standardized. 150, 150, 150, and so on and so on. Okay? And then, um, sorry kung medyo lumalayo na tayo, pero I just wanted to show you the, the whole workflow. Kasi kung data handling lang didiscuss ko, um, sobrang bilis lang niya. <laughs> Kasi yun lang yung data handling. Eh. Yun na yun eh. Uh, and then, uh, dito, sa code na to, uh, we're gonna use a machine learning model built by TensorFlow, which is called Inception V3. It's a kind of image recognition model. So basically, image recognition, what it does is it just recognizes the image from the word itself. Image recognition. So um, so if we're going to teach it uh, to recognize a cat or a dog, yun lang yung gagawin niya. Okay? So... Um, and then this one, so lang naman. And then we need to train our data. So it's actually still training right now. Ayun. Then um, as you can see here, kung makikita nyo, possibly corrupt ex EFI data. So meron tayong data na corrupted. Pero dito sa code natin, um, it automatically skips that data and hindi niya na yun gagamitin for further use. Okay? So, ma medyo matagal tong um, training na to. So, we're gonna skip that one. Uh, actually, stop, i-stop na natin yung training. Kasi matagal talaga mag-train ng data. Ah, ng machine learning model. Then, let's plot some prediction. Ito siya. Ayun. So um 
etong mga nakikita nyo dito, yung mga images dito, ito yung feed in or pinakita natin sa model. Tapos, titignan nyo kung cut ba siya or dog. Ayan. So, halos lahat naman tama. So, dog, which is, this is a dog, di ba? So, cut, cut siya, tama. Cut, dog, 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 cat, cat, dog. Okay? So, tama naman siya lahat. So, let's try another one. Um, let's see kung may mali dito. Um, so, cat, dog, 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 cat, cat, dog, dog. So, tama naman siya. Mataas yung accuracy niya actually. Kung titignan natin dito, yung last accuracy niya is 90, 93%. So, 93% siyang accurate for detecting cat or dog. Ayun. So, um, actually, I have more here, which is data preparation. I'm gonna show this one. Ito na yung last. Actually, in data preparation, it's also referred to as um, data pre-processing. So, yun yung ginawa natin lahat kanina. <laughs> Nauna lang natin gawin niya bago kayo discuss. So, sorry for that. But um, it's the process of transforming raw data so that analysts can run it through machine learning algorithms to uncover insights or make predictions. So, yun yung ginawa natin lahat kanina. So, if you have uh, collected your data and then um, nilinis mo na siya, and then, yung next one is data preparation, which is, ibig sabihin lang, um, you will need to feed into your model. And then, yung mga machine learning engineers or developers, they will need to use your data to make, uh, or to train the model. So, yun siya. So, um, actually, that's it for me. Goodness. I'm sure for now. Ayun. Um, hello, Miss Jane. Um, do you have any questions, guys? Kung meron pa ba kayong questions um, about data handling or machine learning, um, you can you can type in via chat. So let's try to answer that one. So, ayun, wait. Lakayan ko lang yung chat ko. And uh, from Jericho, what can you recommend po as a starter course or learning resource to get into MA, to get into AI or ML path? And how, how can we get into the field as a career since parang wala pong entry-level job kapag AI and ML? Um, I suggest you learn uh, the basic stuff muna. So you should learn Python. And then, kung marunong ka na, kasi ako, I started as RPA. It's it's actually called Robotic Process. Robotic Process. And nakalimutan ko yung A eh, pero it's about robotics. So yung mga automation, um, I do some automation stuff, um, yung scraping data, um, and a lot of robotic processes. So doon ako nag-start and pero hindi Python yung gamit namin. So I learned Python muna like from the very start. So um so learn Python tapos ang ginamit ko noon, I remember it's called Solo Learn web uh, mobile application. So and you can use that for for uh starting starter course or yung para matuto ka ng Python. Pagka natuto ka ng Python, madali na lang kasi yung iba. Pero next next step would be to learn um, yung machine learning. If you wanted to get into AI or data science, um, do some projects with ito, yung Kaggle.com mismo. Kasi dito sa Kaggle.com, kung makikita nyo, uh, can you still see my screen? If you can still see my screen, you can see here na I'm on cats versus dogs, di ba? Then, kung pupunta kayo ng code, ayan, makikita nyo na ito yung mga codes na ginamit for cats versus dogs. So, kung magbubukas kayo ng isa dito, like this one for example, ayan, so nandito na lahat ng codes. Sirarun mo na lang siya. Kung, kung marunong ka mag-Python, malalaman mo kung paano siya ginawa. 
So the next time you will try your own. Andito na siya. 'Di ba? Ma 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 ano ba tawag doon? Um ma-incorporate mo yung learnings from others to your code. Okay? And then ano pa ba? Meron ka ba? Meron ka ba? Um meron meron atang meron may uh, data uh, may entry entry level sa AI or ML. Meron, meron siya. So makikita mo 'yun. Lalo na sa data science, marami. Ayun. Um do you have any other questions, guys? We actually have four minutes left, I think. Thank you, Ren. Sorry ko. So, yeah. um, so since wala pang question, I just wanted to say na um, sa AI or the data science field, maraming tech career shifter. I'm not saying you should uh, shift to tech, pero maraming uh, career shifter. So like for example, uh, merong, meron tayong call center agents, nursing, Uh, architects, um, industrial engineers, teachers. So maraming, maraming uh, tao na nag-shift to, um, ano ito? to tech courses. Uh, I mean, tech industry. Kasi uh, they just like, uh, gusto lang rin na yun. So, ah uh, yes, uh, Metro City AIB accept intern. Pero for now, we have, I think, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, pero for sure we're accepting interns for um, for tech and marketing. Yes. Just to answer you, lagi ko lang, yes. For tech and marketing. And ayun, um, do you have any other questions, guys? before we anyone guys <laughs> thank you then Ayun, uh, since, well, let's just wait for 11.30, I guess. And if andito na Mrs. Ms. Jane. Yes, sir, nandito ako. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Guys, may tanong po pa tayo kay Sir JR. Alam ko marami kayong natutunan. So, uh, syempre, yung iba alam ko hindi relate kasi... Sir, may programming kasi siya. Pero yung mga <laughs> IT natin, so far so good, oh, nakaka-relate. Pero mabilis yung, maganda naman yung tinuro niya. At least nakikita mo yung flow talaga niya. Yes, po. Thank you. Ayun. So, thank you po. So, kahit IT, at least napapollow nila yung handling nung nandun sa cats and dog. Tapos meron silang technique kung paano makukuha yung sa programming kunwari. At least, sir, may natutunan silang bagong knowledge ngayong araw na to. Yes. So, <laughs> okay. yes. Wala na raw, sir, tanong. Sabi ni Miss Helen, thank you raw po. And then, so far, thank you. Then, thank yun, you, sa internship, Jane. about, uh, yan, tech and marketing lang po ang tinatanggap <laughs> ng uh, Metro City AI at the moment po. So, guys, may tanong pa ba tayo kay Sir JR? Can you give Sir JR a virtual clap? Ayan, ayan na sir. Ang mga virtual shop na. Thank you, guys. Ayan. Okay. So, ayan, may heart reaction pa tayo. So, lang so far daw, sir. Wala na silang, wala na silang tanong. Okay. Thank you, Miss Jane. Uh, thank you for uh, letting um, me po. have this answer. Okay. So, in behalf of the Learning Relation and Career Development Office, 
Maraming salamat si Sir JR and Metro City AI for taking your time off and sharing your expertise and experience with our Kais Ko and Kais Ka. Alam ko, marami dun sa mga IT nakarelate, lalo na sana mga engineering. By the way, this video is posted po sa ating PUP Career Center Facebook page. So, in case na may nakalimutan kayo sa lecture ni Sir JR, you can browse in any time po. Just stay tuned lang dun sa ating mga uh, Facebook page well as the PUP uh, the Art Do TV sa YouTube namin. So, paki-like, subscribe, and share po. So, at least hindi lang kayo yung makaka matututo pati yung ibang mga kaibigan nyo, ibang kamag-anak, or etc. or ibang special someone. So, guys, the link for the evaluation form is currently posted sa ating Zoom chat while well as the comment section of our Facebook page. Okay, so... Okay na po ba tayo? Later po kasama natin ang China Bank. Kasama rin natin ang Oracle again. Nest, uh, Nesda and N4SPSSC. Para naman po sa ating uh, afternoon session ng ating career development webinar na inihahandog ng alumni relation and career development office. So, I hope to see you guys later po at sana mas marami kayong matutunan lalo na uh, lalo na magagamit nyo hindi lang ngayon kundi in the near future once you venture in your uh, real, uh, in the real uh, world or sa mundo ng pagtatrabaho. Okay, so maraming salamat guys. I'm Professor Jane S. Kulma signing off. So happy lunch guys and I'll see you again later po. Ito na po ang ating imno ng PUP.